Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I'm your host, Kristen Ostrander. And are you ready to see what your business really looks like on the inside, from the inside? From simple data points to purpose and direction, this episode is only for the serious people. The people that are serious about knowing what to do and how to stop playing small and start chasing after what you really want. And it's going to take getting your hands a little bit dirty in order to figure this stuff out. Grab your pen, grab something to take notes with, because this is literally hands-on work we're doing today. Um, You're going to want to write this stuff down. You're going to want to contemplate and think of this. I really hope you do, because this really is going to give you an accurate assessment of your business as it currently is at the end of this year. I mean, we've got a couple weeks left, right? And we don't wanna wait till the turn of the calendar to start planning for 2023 and figuring out what it is we're doing here and what do we wanna do and what do we still wanna do and what do we not wanna do? So I'm just gonna help you with that here. A couple weeks before the end of the year, we're gonna sit here and have this little chat. Now, if you don't have time to go through these exercises right now and kind of write this stuff down and think about and contemplate it, then I would suggest listening now and then planning a day on your calendar, maybe an hour. Just give yourself an hour. You know, watch your episode of Yellowstone and then do it right after that. Whatever it is, you're binging, watching football, whatever. Don't care. Plan this out. Now, I'm not a huge planner. I'm more of a sponta- spontaneous kind of person. However, what I've learned in business is that if I want to get what I've always got, then I'll keep doing the same things. If I want something different, something big, something small, something, a change, then I'm the one that's responsible for making it, planning it, thinking about it, looking at the pros and cons, talking myself in and out of it over and over again, and then finally just doing it. So that's what I'm here to help you guys do. Remembering that I'm doing all of these things myself as well. I'm in this with you together. Why? Because there's good times and bad. There's hard years and there's amazing years. And at the longer that you're in business, the more you realize how much there are ups and downs. So instead of looking at the micro tiny things that all went wrong and freaking out about it and kind of beating ourselves up about it, we're going to take an accurate assessment of our business over the past 12 months. We'll just call it the year. We're two weeks away from the end of the year. And yes, it's Q4. And yes, we make a lot of sales between now and then. But at the same time, this is really a good snapshot of how this year went, what went wrong, what went right, what can we do better, what can we improve on? Because you know what? Usually when you're working for a company, they have a year in review or they give you some sort of, you know, review as an employee, what you can improve on, whether or not you're getting a raise, um, what you've done well at. This is basically just doing that for yourself, for your own business, for yourself, so that you can figure out what you need to change in order to grow. So today we're all about your Amazon growth plan. Now, before I get started, I just want to remind you that maybe part of your growth plan can be one of the events that we're hosting here at Mommy Income in the next 12 months. Starting with January 4th, we are hosting a Confident Wholesale Bundlers workshop in Dallas in conjunction with the Dallas Marketplace Home and Gift Show that they have there. There's going to be meeting of vendors and getting catalogs and getting high quality products. That's something that I really want to stress. High quality products bring customers back, leave good reviews, have positive experiences. That's why we're going to one of the largest trade shows there is and the first one of 2023 because they have the best stuff. They have the best vendors. You have the best opportunity to get products first off the table. That's It's just a really, really great show to go to. So what's included with your workshop? Well, first is a meet and greet party. I get to sit with you, have drinks and food, and just learn about you and your business and talk with you and other sellers about um, their Amazon experience, whether you're new or you've been doing this 10 years, 20 years like me. We're just going to sit and chat and get to know each other. I love that. I love people. And I just want to meet you and listen to your story and uh, just discover who you are. And then on Thursday, we are going to roll up our sleeves and we are going to build bundles from catalogs, from scratch, using the framework that you're already familiar with so that while you're creating your bundle, you can ask questions along the way. But I'm going to walk with you through the process 
so that you can do it yourself. And when you're getting stuck, you can ask questions, raising your hand, bringing me over to your table, looking over your shoulder so you can say, this is where I'm stuck. Get me over this hump. That's what we're going to do in the workshops. You're going to walk away with a profitable bundle for your store. And then Friday, I'm going to walk with you side by side together to the trade show so we can talk with vendors and get you accounts and get you familiar with products that are out there that you can put in your bundles that you can start ordering immediately from these companies who cannot wait to see your face, meet you and sell product to you. Hundreds of thousands of vendors, catalogs, legitimate wholesale products. That's what we're going to go do. I'd love for you to be a part of that. Now, I know I've heard a couple of you guys say a few things about the workshop, how it's very expensive and it's out of your budget. And I totally get that because I understand I have a budget too. I just had to forego a, a really awesome conference that I really wanted to go to in November because it just wasn't in the budget for right now. So I get it. If now is not the time, save up. We're going to have other workshops. We also have just a trade show walkthrough event happening at the end of February at ASD in Las Vegas. So if you want to forego the actual workshopping and you just want to meet some vendors, get some catalogs, learn the lay of the land of how to work a trade show, I will walk you through that as well in Las Vegas. It's not as much of an investment, but that's what it is. An investment that pays dividends. An investment that builds six and seven figure businesses. If one client that came in January of 2018 and now is hitting multiple six figures, all with bundles. Little bit of regular wholesale, little tiny bit of retail arbitrage left, because it, let's admit, those things are fun. But bundles are fun too. It's really fun when you create something and then you sell it over and over and over again, and all you have to do is repurchase the same things. And the customers are buying, and they're happy, and they're coming back over and over and over. So what you invest into the workshop can pay you dividends over and over and over again. It's an investment for sure. It's a costly one. It costs money to fly across the country, to stay overnight, to stay for three days, to put the work in. But by this time next year, you could be at your goal, succeeding beyond your goal. It depends on what you invest in right now. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Mommyincome.com slash workshop. You can get all of the workshop information there and everything that we have on the docket there. We're going to talk more about that later. But right now we are going to get into how, what is your growth plan for 2023? Your business plan. What are you going to do? What are you going to do differently? So we're going to start with this. Get your pen if you don't have one. If not, if you're walking the dog or driving your car or doing grocery shopping, whatever else, um, save this, come back to it, make a date on your calendar to review this because this is going to be an activity that we're kind of doing together. Um, I wish I had some sort of worksheet that goes along with this because I'm a worksheet person because why not? I don't know. I just like to write stuff. It helps me solidify my ideas, my goals, everything. So I'm a pen and paper, Sharpie, sticky note person course. If you guys want to ever send me a present and at all, um, sticky notes, stationery, you know, Sharpies, pens, like I literally love all those things. Anyway, <laughs> year in review. This is going to be how to review your year, how to set your goals and how to grow for the following year. So right now, the first thing we need to start with is where are you right now? There's no shame in this. There's no ups, downs. There's no emotion or meaning attached to it. It's just an assessment. Where are you? What does your business look like today? So here, here's what we do to, to assess our business. We collect data. That's it. There's no meaning. There's no, and this is something I want to really say, is that like when we're collecting data, there's not like good data or bad data or I have good numbers or bad numbers or my profits or this, that. No, we're not assigning meaning to any of these things. We're just collecting the data. So how many bundles have you launched this year? Or how many products have you launched? How many, when I say launched, how many new things have you brought to Amazon? How many new listings have you created? How many sales have you made? How many units have you sold? What is your best selling product to date? And how much revenue have you generated off of that one product? These are numbers that people don't usually collect and they have no idea. Let me just be honest, at the drop of a dime, I should be able to ask you, what is your best selling product? You might not know how much, how many units you've sold of that item or how much profit is actually in there, but it shouldn't take long for you to gather that information. What are your top three selling products? You should know. 
And there's no shame or badness if you don't. It's, you don't know what you don't know. So what we, what we need to keep track of are some of these numbers. How many products have you launched? How many bundles have you launched? How, mm, how many units have you sold? What is your average selling price? These are numbers that Amazon gives you now. Your ASP, your average selling price of each unit. Here's one that most people don't know. How many hours do you work on average on your business? On and in your business managing all the things. How many hours, average hours a week do you work? Average weekly hours. So how much how much time do you spend on your business? Collect all the different data points. What's your total profit for the year? And if you average work 10 hours a week for that profit every week for the whole year, how much are you making per week? Even if you're not keeping it, which you know I'm an advocate for, you can still collect all these numbers. If you're not much of a data collection person, you need to become one. It's one of those skills that you need in your business. Because if I sat here and said, I have a free hour and I want to give you a free coaching session and what are your data points and how can we improve them? You should be ready. You should be ready. Be ready to produce those numbers. I know a lot of people don't like numbers and it can, this is not accounting and bookkeeping either. This is just simply collecting the data that's pretty much already there for you. You can go to your Amazon accounts. You can go to your reports. You can sort by highest, especially if you have inventory lab. If you have in inventory lab, you can sort by your pr most profitable ASIN in your reports. You can sort by which item has sold the most this whole year, which vendor is your most profitable. If you've entered the information correctly, you can let sort by vendor, ascending to descending, and it will show you, or descending to ascending, slowest to not. So collect your data and get a fair assessment about where you are in your business. These are also things to, to make note of. Where are you right now? Certain sales goals. Did you have sales goals? Do you have a profit goal? Do you have a, do, have you paid off any debt? Take note of your milestones for 2022. Take note. A great way to do this is to scroll through your camera roll, okay? If you don't really know, can't really remember, you're like me and everything kind of comes and goes and you just don't remember, go back to January and start scrolling through your camera roll. What was happening? Where did you go? What did you participate in? What were some of the events that happened in your life that may have caused some ups and downs in business? Did you have a profit goal? Did you fall short of that? Where are you? If you didn't have a goal, then what are your current numbers? And are you happy with them? So certain sales goals numbers, what, what is it that you'd like to hit and why? If you say I'd like to hit, if you haven't hit six figures and you'd like to hit six figures, what do, you, what do you think it's going to take to get there? Where are you now? Are you at 20,000? Are you at 99.9 thousand and you want to get just another dollar? Like, where are you? Did you buy something this year? Did you quit your job? Did you take another job? Did you reduce your hours? Did you increase your hours? Did you pay off any debt? What were your goals for this year? Why did you start this business? And where's all the revenue and money going and coming from? Did you take a vacation? Look at your calendar for the last year and what triggers some memories of some great things that happened. Not just in your business, in your life. Did you launch a certain product? Did someone get married? Did you have a, um, a child? Did you get a new pet? Did a pet die? Like all of these different things that have happened over time and how it has affected you. Because that, my friends, does also affect your bottom line. Life factors in. It's not just about data and numbers and all these things. They all factor in. It also gives us a good snapshot of real life happens and how does it affect our numbers? So gather all of these data points and just take an assessment of where you are right now. How much do you owe if you owe any debts? How much are you bringing in? What are outstanding? What, have gone, what has gone really well? That's one question. That's one part of data collection looking at your memories from your camera roll, looking at things in your business. What went well for you? And then we do have to take the other assessment of what went wrong. Now, here's where I warn you, because guess what, you guys, we're really, really good at pointing out all of what went wrong. Most of the time, we can see more of what went wrong because it hurts more, let's be honest. It's painful. We lose money or we do make mistakes or we do something wrong or we make a bad decision. 
It hurts more, but I'm going to limit you to a maximum of three things that went wrong. Grouping them together, the top three things that have gone wrong that really hurt you in business this year one way or the other. And it could be simply, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. I made expensive mistakes giving something a try or I trusted the wrong person or I didn't trust myself, whatever that is. We all need improvement. We all do. None of us are perfect. None of us are going to knock it out of the park every single time. This is normal. The more you normalize mistakes that you make in business, the easier it is for you to get over it. Maximum of three items on your what went wrong list. Max. We all need improvement. So where do you need the most improvement? Now, there's rules about this what went wrong list. The number one rule is the only, the things that you can put on there, only things that you can control. So if COVID went wrong, (laughs) I know this is, we're like two years beyond this, right? But like, if that's something that went wrong, you can't control that. So that doesn't mean it went wrong. I mean, it went wrong, but it's not something that you can fix or change. But things on the list that went wrong are stuff that we're owning and taking responsibility for if it's our responsibility. Things we can control and change. This is just fact finding. This is not self-loathing. This is not woe is me or I'm a big screw up and I'm a big failure and there's no judgments. We're just fact finding. Top three items that went wrong. I'll give you an example of things that I can't put on the list. We lost a lot of money this year due to customer returns. We have since put some things in place to help us not have customer returns as much anymore by adding stickers to our products that say, wait, stop. If this seal has been broken, please return this item immediately. That's something that's been helping us to do that. But that's something that was in halfway in our control and halfway out of our control. Amazon chooses what they receive and what they put back on the shelf and what they send out to customers. And unfortunately for us, they've done that several times this year where they've received a customer return and made a mistake on the condition of such item and then sent that item back to another customer, which then creates this whole customer service nightmare because now someone else is getting a used product and now we have two angry customers and ah, that went wrong. Yes, we did something to fix it. And so we're going to let it go. But this is the fact finding what went wrong. Did you invest in a bad product that just never sold? Did you write a bad listing or did you, uh, you know, whatever it is that might have went wrong, three things maximum, things that you can fix and control. So this is part of our assessment. What went amazing and what went wrong? And this goes to where you want to go next where you want to go next. So we have to take an assessment of where we are now before we can say, okay, this is where I'm at and I'd like to go over there. I'd like to go this way. I'd like to climb that mountain. I'd like to reduce this. What Set those goals. We're going to start by setting one 12-month goal. Small 12-month goal. Now, these are some options of goals that you can set within your business, but you can choose whatever it is you want, okay? Goal in your business. Where do you want to go? You know where you're at now. You took an assessment of all these numbers. Not good, bad, right, wrong, anything. They just are. So if you've got $5,000 and you're making $5,000 a month in your business and you want that to be $10,000, we're going to take small steps to get there. So what is your goal? Number one, it could be increasing revenue by a certain percentage. I like 25% because that's something that's easily measurable and doable. Someone's like, I want to double my sales. Well, that's a lot easier when you have, when you're making a hundred thousand dollars rather than a million dollars. If I want to double my sales at a million, I have to probably hire a couple more people and, you know, really, really get specific about how I would want to double that. And to be honest, I'm not sure that that's doable in 12 months without significantly more financial investment. So you have to take an accurate assessment of where you're at and reasonable expectations of where to go. So most companies don't set their growth rate of like, we want to grow 100% this year. Well, if you're a startup and you're really, really small, that's easily obtainable. 
If you've been in business for a while, doubling your sales is going to take a lot more output. So setting something at a reasonable growth rate, 10%, even 25% is reasonable. Increase profits by 25%. Now, increasing profits does not have to mean increasing output. Increasing profits can mean simply increase by decreasing expenses, finding products that cost less or find them at a lesser cost or raise your price. Those are things that are easier to fix than, say, increase your total overall growth by 25%. Your other goal can be increasing your ASP. And remember, these are 12-month goals. So you literally have 12 months to get there. That means, like, in January, you're not going to be like, oh, we raised our price right away. We've got our 25%. It's a consistent growth over time. In each quarter, you should be able to see a little bit of that needle moving. Maybe one of your goals is just to reduce your debt. Maybe you've gotten yourself into some debt and you have some inventory debt or personal debt or whatever it is. And instead of spending your money reinvesting in your business, you're going to decide that your number one goal for 12 months is to be debt free. Your goal is up to you. But I'm going to ask you for a couple of things. Number one, you got to know where you are and where you want to go. And then we can fill in the gaps together. How will we get there? Lots and lots of small steps. So what is your goal? These are these are examples of some goals. Uh, revenue goal, increase revenue goals by 25%. Increase a ASP by $10. Increase profits by 20%. Reduce all costs. Reduce debt by 10%. Now what you need to do now is once you set that goal, whatever that is, ask yourself this question. What will it take of, in terms of investment? in both time and money to increase output and make this work. Because you know, you can't do the same things that you're doing now and expect to just increase automatically. I know that that should go without saying, but unfortunately it doesn't. You can't do the same things over and over and over and expect different results. You might get the same results. You might get randomly a better result every now and then, but your results are direct directly related to the effort that you put in or that your team puts in or certain things that you take action on that put into place that produce results. They don't just happen and they don't happen by continually doing the same things over and over. Example is this. In order to increase sales by 25%, I need to know what that is and break it down to the average sales per month, per unit, per bundle, and then do the math. Okay, so if you want to increase your sales by 25%, and right now your sales are $100,000 a year, 25% is $125,000 a year, right? I don't know. I'm not very good at math. So how many more sales do you need to get to that point? So if you're selling $100,000 and you want to increase by 25%, then you need to sell $25,000 more of product this year. And breaking that down per month, that's an extra $2,000 a month or so, give or take. So what is it? what are you going to need to do? How are you going to increase your output? How are you going to make $2,000 more per month for your business? Break it down even smaller. Get your 12 month and then take it into a one month and then take it down to units if you have to. And this is why doing the assessment ahead of time of gathering all the data and collecting all the information so that you know, hey, I, I my average sales price is $25 per unit or $10 per unit. How many units do I need to sell in order to hit my goal? <laughs> this is like the story problems from like fourth grade, right? Or something like that. Now, I'm not great at math and I'm not making fun of any of that. I'm just simply saying that like this is your basic math of saying, okay, if I want to do this and I want to reach this goal, then these are the these, these are the numbers I need to hit. And then it's your job to figure out how or what. So say you're not doing bundles right now and you're just doing wholesale or arbitrage or whatever it is you're doing. You're saying, okay, I want to add a bundle. And I want it to, you know, help. I want to add bundles. So I'm going to do one bundle in quarter one. And I'm going to spend $500 on that bundle. And my average selling price, I'd like to get it up to here. Whatever that is, is drawing out the steps. So if you know how many bundles you have or how many bundles you haven't done or whatever, then you can plan that ahead of time. 
You can plan it all ahead of time. How many more bundles do you need to create and sell in order to hit your goal? What if your goal is to increase your revenue with a different income stream? That's kind of what I'm working on too. I like multiple income streams. I have money coming in from Amazon product sales. I have a couple of brands I manage. I have mommy income. I have um, course sales of the wholesale bundle revenue, you know, things like that. So where do I want, what goals do I want? I want to create another income stream. So if that's your, your goal, then looking at the 80-20 rule. 80-20, spend 80% 80 of your time and money on the things that are already working that you already know how to do. You spend 20% of your money and time on the, on future things, things that are not yet, things that you are working on and working towards, new things. So if you're in arbitrage and you really want to add wholesale or wholesale bundles, keep your 80-20. 80% of your goal still should be keep and maintain this revenue, but I'm going to now split this between 80-20. I want this and this is working and I can do that, but I'm going to spend 20% of my time and money and energy creating something new that will also make me money. Maybe that's wholesale and maybe you're just learning. So one of the things you can do is come to a trade show and get some catalogs and learn how to deal with vendors. That doesn't always have to cost you money. It can just cost you the time it takes to learn something new and then implementing those things. And then they grow together. So if you got your 80 up here and your 20 down here, but as you're growing, they grow. So what is that 80, 20 for you? Is there a new income stream that you want? And finally, going to remind you of the stop, can start, start and continue. Okay. First of all, we just took an assessment, right? You took an assessment of your business. What's going right? What went right? What went wrong? What are you going to stop doing? There's some things in your business that you absolutely hate or what drives you crazy, tasks you hate, things that you just cannot stand doing that might need doing. So number one, you could outsource those things. Hire someone a few hours a week to do something to take off your plate. Maybe it's a service. Maybe it's a software. Maybe it's something that you can pay and do to know. Did you know that like Inventory Lab, for example, is like outsourcing bookkeeping almost? It's like they have my profit and loss that I can just click the button and it spits it out and I can give it to my accountants or attorneys or loan officer or whatever you need it for. And that's like outsourcing, right? That's paying a service to do something that you don't like or don't want to or don't know how to do. Outsourcing doesn't always have to mean hiring a person. It could be hiring a software or a system to do it for you. That's going to take, you guessed it, work to set it up, to learn it, to hire, to do whatever. But the time you spend doing that will pay you back a hundredfold. Because that's five more hours a week that you don't have to spend doing that. Takes money to make money kind of thing. And why? Why does the task that, you're, that you hate, what are you going to stop doing? What does this task cause inside of you that makes you want to walk away from it, to go make it go away? So whatever those things are, you can stop doing them. It doesn't mean that your business, you have to close your business because you don't like doing bookkeeping or accounting or taxes. Just outsource it. And there's inexpensive ways to outsource almost everything. So if you're really on a tight budget, then spend your time researching that. Because I'm going to be honest. You can't come to me and say, I have no time and no money, but I want to run a business so that I can make more money. No, you don't need a business. You need a job or you need a job that pays more or a different job because running a business requires some investment. I don't know why we have to be apologetic about that. Like that's real life. Like if you want to drive a car, you have to buy a car or you have to rent a car and you have to pay insurance and put gas on it and put tires in it. Like it doesn't just work for you. You have to invest in it. It doesn't have to mean uh, uh, your life savings or an arm and a leg or hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you're going to, ask to have to invest time and money into a business. And if you don't have either one, then maybe business isn't for you. But if you have a little bit of both, you can make it work. It will be slower, but it will still be because guess what? Years, time, months, they're going to go by anyway. And this time next year, you could be at and exceeding your goals or not. The choice is yours. But you can't deposit excuses. So I don't want to hear any. I don't want to hear any. Can't deposit excuses. I've tried that for many years and it never worked. 
But if you have a little bit of time and a little bit of money and you're willing to leverage that to your advantage, you will get where you want to go. Might not be overnight, but you'll get there. If you're dedicated to it and you're committed to taking small steps to get there. So that's what you're going to stop doing, whatever that thing is, one thing. What are you going to continue doing? That's like what went well and you want more of. What makes you cause, what causes you to think, I want more of that. Whatever that is, continue doing that and proceed with activities that lead you to more of that. And now start doing. This is part of that 80-20 we talked about. What are we going to start doing? What is exciting? What causes you to think, I could do more of, I wish I could do more of that. Or that sounds fun. Or that's something that gets you curious and excited. Start doing. Now, I'm going to preface this with something. Start doing doesn't always have to be about business. We are well-rounded human beings with interests and love and desires and connection and all of these things. And it's not just about making money, making business, making progress. So what are you going to start doing? Again, what's exciting? What makes you feel like, oh, I wish I could do that? Or that sounds fun. Those are the things I want you to, something to start doing. So what are you going to stop? What are you going to continue? And what are you going to start? Where do you want to go? What is this 12 months? It's really about writing down what you want. And I'm saying write it down because I mean it. Write it somewhere. Write it on a sticky note. Tuck it in your Bible, tuck it in your phone, tuck it in the, 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 your, you don't have to show anybody, but you writing it down is commitment, at least to yourself. You're saying, you know what? This is what I want. Unapologetically. There's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no wrong. There's no anything in saying, this is what I want. And then clarify it. Tell yourself why. Why do you want that? What do you think that is going to do for you? What's it going to give you? What are you, what is, what are you willing to sacrifice for? You know, I'm in the Bible. There's this parable and it talks about this man who found the a great, great treasure. He found this treasure and he hurried up and he buried the treasure in a field and then he sold everything he owned to buy the field. It was so valuable to him, this treasure that he found. That first of all, he hid it away. He wanted to make sure it was stayed treasure. And then he sold everything he owned so he could get the treasure and keep it for himself. Tell me, what's the treasure? What is so important to you and so valuable to you that you would sell everything that you own to have that. And guess what, y'all? I'm not talking about material things here. We're talking buying, selling, business. But what is that thing that you want most? And you're willing to give up everything for that thing. It might be your freedom. It might be peace. It might be security. It might be fill in the blank. But I'm just using that as an example for you examining in your business and in your life, what is it that you really want? What is this business, this job, this money doing for you? What do you want it to do for you? Because there's nothing worse than spending all of your time and money and effort climbing a ladder that gets to a place that you don't want to be. You can climb a ladder. You can earn money. But what do you want? It's just a tool. Money is just a tool. What does it do for you? It allows you more options. What are the options that you want? So that's just reasons we set goals analyzing this. Most people don't want to talk about this stuff because it feels yucky. 
it's easy to just say, hey, this is exactly how you increase your bottom line by 25% and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to dig deeper. Unapologetically. I'm going to dig deeper and ask you why you want that. And what do you think that's going to do for you? You know why? Because at the end of the day, we're motivated by what we think we are going to reap from what we put in. We're motivated by keeping the lights on sometimes. So whatever is motivating you, whatever causes you to take action, think about it, analyze it, decide. And you know what? No one's here to judge you. So you just take an assessment of your business, of yourself, of, your, of what you really want. And then let's make steps. Take steps, small steps to get there. 12 month goals. By this time next year, I want to hear from you and say, hey, that podcast you did. I did what you said and I got there. You'll get there. If you have realistic expectations and goals and that treasure that you would sell everything to buy. What is that? Is it peace of mind? Is it just relief? Define that and then go get your treasure. I'm here to help. I know that you could be anywhere else doing any other thing in this moment. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast and giving me 30 some minutes of your time every week. I can't wait to hear how you're going to set your goals and crush your goals. Guys, don't forget about the workshop. If you feel like that's the investment that you need to make to make the next change and move in your business, I would be delighted to meet you. Mommyincome.com forward slash workshop. See you guys. Same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.